Hi, this is Mike Smith, and this is my week 7 video tutorial for an introduction to interactive programming in Python. This week we're going to be making a little hockey shooter game, and I'll take you through the code on how to build it. First on the top here you'll see I have something called style ruler comment, and I have a whole bunch of numbers here. Basically these numbers count out 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to 79, which is the recommended length of a line. And you'll notice down at the bottom here, you have to scroll back and forth right now. This is something I'll usually do so I can measure my line length and keep it at the proper length. So if I bring this out here to the end of this line, you'll notice that the scroll bar on the bottom disappears and this will keep me at 79 characters maximum for the line. We start out by importing simple GUI, math, and random, because I know I'll need all them. And then I have image size and centers for the ice surface, my player, and the puck. Now the puck I could have just drawn as a black circle, but I wanted to use the sprite class with it, so I decided to just make an image of a black circle. You'll also notice here that any of these constants I have at the top of my code, pretty much anywhere else in the code, would just be numbers like divide by two or times by two or stuff of that nature. The centers, I calculate them based on the size divided by two. Score height, I have that set at 100 and that is the uh, height of my scoreboard at the top and my title. I set the width and the height of the screen based on the image size of the ice. Normally I'd have this at 2.0 instead of 1.5, but because of the fact that I have my screen resolution set lower for recording this video, I had to set it down to 1.5 so it'll fit on the screen. I also have to add the score height to the height of the canvas because I need to display the ice plus the score above it. I'll show you that briefly here. This is what we have. So we got the ice surface and then we got the scoreboard on top. Then we have our score of zero and total pucks of zero. Uh, basically what the game is is that you have the hockey player that skates around the ice. There will be pucks that spawn in different places on the ice and you have 10 seconds, which is what this shot time is, to go grab the puck and shoot it in the net. The total pucks is the total puck spawn and the score is the number of pucks that you actually get in the net in the time allowed. I also have a countdown here, which I'm starting off at 1, as you'll see here. It shows one here. This is a countdown timer for the 10 seconds, and you'll see why I started off at one here in a little bit. The image info class here is directly copied out of the spaceship template. There's nothing changed in it at all. And then down here I set up my images, which have to be after the image info class because it uses it. To keep these under the 79 character length of the line, I split up the URL a bit. I start with the URL prefix, which is just the Dropbox prefix that all the images reside at. And then I set each image's info and URL to the sizes and centers set above, as well as what the rest of the URL is. And then the ice image is simple GUI load image, and then URL prefix plus the actual URL for that particular file. In the player and the puck, I also need a radius for collisions later on. That is something that will be used next week after we do collisions. So I'll just set the radius to the image center, either 0 or 1, because where that is half the image, that is also the radius of the image. Now here I have this multiplied by 0 0.75. And the only reason I have the 0.75 here, it's not in the code that I'll be releasing, because the only reason I have it is I'm adjusting the player size based on the fact that I adjusted the ice size to fit the screen for this recording. Now here from the spaceship template, I also brought in the angle to vector and distance functions. The angle to vector function we will be using here, but the distance we will not be using until we do collisions next week. Player class. The player class is basically like the ship class. The only thing different in it is I have a skating variable here 
and I'm actually drawing the image instead of the round circle that the template starts off with. And I'm just using self.image, self.image center, self.image size, self.pause. This here would also be just self.image size, but again I'm adjusting by 0.75 because of my current screen resolution. That's something I could have set up so that it automatically does it based on what we use at the top, but I decided I wanted to keep the code fairly simple for the tutorial, so I just made that little edit so it'll look decent. Sprite class is directly copied from the template. The draw handler, I'll get into that in a minute. The key down and key up, just have passed in them at the moment. So down at the bottom, I start to frame. It's called a hockey shooter using the width and the height. I set up my player to be a player class. Its initial position is going to be with width divided by 2 plus the player radius and height plus the score height plus the player info radius divided by 2. That way it puts it approximately in the center. The plus player info radius here basically keeps it so that it's basically right at the red line and fully inside the circle. Uh, that way if we decide we're in a two player game, have another player on the other side facing this player, then they'll be able to do a face off to see which one can get the puck and get in the other net. And I also have a rotation here of math.py. If I had a player on the opposite side, then I wouldn't need a rotation because the image is actually facing that direction. A full circle in radians is 2 pi. So by using a rotation of pi, it'll turn halfway around the circle or facing the opposite direction. And of course at the bottom here I set up the draw handler, the key down and key up handlers, and start to frame. In a draw function we have the title set to welcome to hockey shooter, the text size I'm setting it to 40, and then I get the title width so I can center it on the canvas using the canvas text width function. I send it the title as well as the text size and then I draw the text using the width minus the title width divided by 2 that centers it and I draw it at text size down which puts it approximately at the top and then I put in a timer text I don't need to get the text width on that because it's just going to go close to the left edge so I just set it to be down by text size times 2 since it's the second line and off the edge by text size as well so it makes it approximately the same distance. It's not quite but it's close enough for this purpose. The score text is very similar. It appends the score in a total box. It gets the width. It sets it at width minus the score width minus the text size to keep it away from the right edge. And it's on the same level down which is text size times 2. And then I draw the ice image using its center property, its size. To draw it on the screen, the center of the width would be divided by 2, and the height would be the height plus the score height divided by 2. And the size of it would be the width, and then the height minus the score height. Then I draw the player, and run the update on the player as well. And as you can see again, it shows welcome to hockey shooter up here. The timer and the score are basically on the same line, with a bit of buffer on each edge. So now I want to be able to move and turn the player. So I'm going to need to replace my keyboard handlers. So we can use left, right, or up. And left and right just call update angle velocity method of the player class. And the up calls the update skate method of the player class. And just sends true or false that they're actually moving forward. The angle velocity here is how fast I want it to turn, which I added a global for up top here. I just set at 0 0.08 radians. So each update of the draw handler will turn by 0 0.08 radians. As you can see here, there's no down button available because uh, it's a new skater hasn't learned how to skate backwards yet. We also need to put those methods into the player class. So we'll open up the player class here and we'll add those methods. Basically all those methods do is add the angle velocity to the current angle velocity and set the self.skate to true or false. And there's one more thing we need to get this moving and turning and that would be information in the update method 
to actually update its angle and position. Put that code in here. So basically all this does is update the player's position using its current velocity. It updates the angle using its angular velocity. It uses the angle to vector function to calculate a forward vector. And if self.skate is true, that means we have the button pressed down and we'll update its velocity based on that forward vector. So we'll run that and you can see here now that it can turn and it can also move. Only it's moving really fast <laughs> and going off screen. Run that again. Okay. So we have to slow it down and we have to keep it on the screen. So back in the update method, we're going to add some more code. And this code basically here is similar to Pong, where if you get close to the edge, you reverse the direction by just doing a minus. It also changes the angle so the player faces a different direction. I'm not going to get too much into that because you don't need it for a spaceship, but if you have any questions on that you can ask in the comments. And then we're going to update the velocity based on a global called friction, which I added up here. Now in the video he shows you as 1 minus some constant, so I just set it to 0.91 which is something less than 1. Okay, we'll give that a try. So now you can see it doesn't start going quite as fast and it does slow down when I let go of the button. And since of course we're on ice, we're not going to stop right away. you also notice that if I bounce off the edge, it automatically turns the player the other way and bounces off on a similar angle as a hit. So if I keep the button held down, it bounces around like it would in Pong. You may notice a slight issue with it getting stuck on this side, which is a issue similar to what some people found in Pong. Since it's not something that's needed for this project, I haven't looked into resolving that issue. Now we need to spawn the puck. Set up a timer for the puck spawner. We'll start the timer and we'll put in the function for our puck spawner. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to decrement the global countdown by one. If the countdown is equal to zero it's going to spawn a new puck and set the countdown to the shot time which we set up top as 10 to give you 10 seconds to get the puck in the net. The position is going to be some random range within the width of the screen. Here I have it within one-fifth and four-fifth of the width just so it keeps it in front of the net, not be behind the net or in the net when it spawns. And then I also use a random range for the Y as well which uses the radius of the puck and the score height because it has to be at least that far down on the screen and then the height minus the radius of the puck to keep it off the bottom of the screen. This is actually a little more complex than what you would need for an asteroid. Now the puck is kind of a cross between an asteroid and a missile because we are spawning the puck at different places like an asteroid but later on we'll also be shooting the puck like a missile. So as the game is kind of part spaceship, part Pong, the puck is part asteroid and part missile. And then we just create an object called Puck, that is a sprite object, at that position. And it starts off with no velocity and doesn't need anything to do with angles. We use our Puck image and our Puck info. So now we got to draw it. Now back in the draw handler. I'll put it in here. And we'll just say if Puck then draw the puck. And we have to do this before we draw the player, otherwise 
once the player goes over top of the puck, try to get the puck, you'd actually see the puck on top of the player, which wouldn't be good. Then down in the main part of the program, we also need to spawn the initial puck. And as we saw up top where we set our countdown to one, the very first time puck spawner gets called here, it decrements countdown by one, it becomes zero, so it automatically will spawn a puck that first time. So let's run that. And we see a puck over on the side here. And we see the countdown going from 10 down to 1. And then once it gets to 0, it starts off at 10 again and spawns the puck somewhere else. The ejector would be go to grab the puck and then fire it in the net using a space bar before the timer hits to 0. One thing to notice is that when we bounce off the edge, I just instantly make them turn around the opposite direction. I could use some sort of update so it gradually turns and looks more fluid, but that would make the code a little bit more complex for the tutorial, and I didn't want to do that. This covers most of phase one, except that it doesn't use the modulus because I'm using Pong type code to keep it on a surface rather than wrapping around. I did not implement any sound for the movement, but in a project that's fairly simple, you just check to see if you're thrusting, if you are, you play the sound, if you're not, you rewind it. I also didn't switch between a regular image and a thrust image, because when a player is skating, you wouldn't have the same image all the time. You'd actually have to alternate back and forth between two images or several images, and that would get in the more of a sprite animation, which I'll be covering next week. We did part of phase two, which is the sprite class here. I didn't actually do any updates here because unlike an asteroid that moves by itself, the puck actually needs the player to move it, and since that requires collision between the puck and the player to act for the player to actually get the puck to begin with, which is covered next week, I did not do that. But it is similar to the player class, and only simpler. I didn't do anything on phase three of the project, but that's just adding another key to your key handler, a shoot method to your player, or ship in the case of the project. Someone else may be covering information on this phase. If not, I'm sure it'll be lots of help on the forums, and if you really get stuck, you can check in with the code clinic. And phase four is basically just displaying it on the screen, which I have pretty much covered in this as well. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and it will help with your project and you'll enjoy the game next week when we get it done. Good luck and have fun.